Hey, what's up? How's it going? My name's Andrew, and my chops are really tired. <laughs> yes, I'm a horn player, and I make excuses because uh, I've been playing for two hours today, and my face hurts. Anyway, <laughs> I hope you're having a fantastic day. It's great to see you. Thanks so much for stopping by. And um, I've got another instrument showcase today. I'm going to uh, tell you all about this really cool French horn that I recently, well actually it's been quite a few months now that I've had this horn, but now I have a chance to show it off and to uh, talk about it. Most of you who watch my channel probably know that I usually play on a Lanstro horn, and if you don't know about Lanstro horns, you should. Definitely go check them out, I'll put a link in the description. Um, but anyway, my Lanstro is kind of an alternative design. Um, it's very similar to a Con 6D. It's also a very similar wrap to the Lawson wrap and, um, and to the, those older Yamaha uh, double horns that were made in like the 80s and such. Um, there's like the 561, 662, 34, 764, 766, 866, those models and probably a few others that I missed. Um, they kind of all fall into a similar category of uh, it's a double horn with inline valves and the thumb valve, the change valve is on the front end of the valve cluster. Um, and it's kind of, it kind of has some playing characteristics of both Crispy and Geyer style double horns which are kind of seen as being like on opposite ends of the spectrum uh, in terms of tone and um, feel and like the playing characteristics and everything. So um, those kind of middle ground horns are kind of seen as like a compromise and um, they're able to blend with either style. And uh, that's part of why I play a Lanstro and, um, and it also was a compromise for my own sort of taste uh, in sound concept because I grew up playing crispy style horns. I played a Con 8D for a couple years, then I switched to a Holton 180 which was also a large bell crispy style. Um, if you've been hanging around my channel for a while, you definitely will have seen that Holton. And um, it was a good horn, but I ended up replacing it with my Lanstro because um, the Lanstro is definitely a better instrument. Uh, it's just incredibly high quality craftsmanship and um, there's more complexity in the sound and it allowed me to be able to kind of uh, blend in. It served the utilitarian purpose of allowing me to blend in with any any section, um, because a lot of a lot of people I rub shoulders with in the horn world now, especially here in the United States, are favoring the the Geyer style and Knopf style horns. Um, that kind of seems to be the thing now, um, which I just I don't really like those horns very much. It's just not my thing. It's not my taste. It's it's purely subjective thing. A lot of people seem to really like the Geyer style horns. I just don't. I've never never enjoyed playing any of them. Um, neither sound nor feel. Um, I tend to be much more drawn to the crispy style horns and um, that is the type of horn that I get to show you today. Um, this is a Wessex horn and um, you probably have heard of Wessex um, the Wessex Tubas, I think is the name of their website, and um, I'll also link that in the description if you want to check that out. And um, they are a brand, that, they've been around for a while now, but they have continually been developing more and more and coming up with designs that are supposed to be like packed with value. Like, how cheap can we make a good quality instrument? Like. They're not trying to cut corners with the quality, but they're trying to make a good instrument as affordable as possible, which is so cool. And I think they're doing an excellent job with it, at least from my experience with this instrument here. Um, I've, I've been very impressed. So this, this is a Wessex uh, 601. Um, the lead pipe is stamped FH601, which I think there are a couple other manufacturers that have the same designation. Um, I know there's also the Mac Brass double horn, the Crispy double horn, which I think, I, I imagine, might be kind of the same horn. It might even be made in the same factory. Um, 
I don't know. Uh, if you know, please tell me in the comments. I'd love to, to know all the, all the inside info about that. But um, anyway, th this is kind of a generic crispy stencil, crispy copy. Um, and I've always wondered for a while, like, are these horns actually good? Or are they kind of just not very good and but the price is attractive or they're only good for beginning students and and really even there I mean a, a beginning student needs a great instrument otherwise you won't really progress you need an instrument that's really good quality and will really get you going um, so I so I didn't really know what to think um, but now I got a chance to, to try one my dad who um, is retired um, premier Air Force Band musician um, and is now a becoming quickly becoming an excellent uh, repair technician for wind and brass instruments gotta brag on my dad a little bit he I'm very proud of the amazing stuff he's been up to um, but anyway my dad uh, acquired this horn and another one just like it give me one sec another one just like it <laughs> so two Wessex horns the same model um, basically the same exact things going on here and uh, he acquired these two instruments in exchange for doing some repair work um, on a saxophone for a colleague of his and he was like hey Andrew I got these horns um, I'll try and fix them up so you can play them you, you wanna fiddle around with them and see what you think and I was like totally I totally wanna fiddle around so um, anyway, I've been playing this horn because this one is not quite in playable condition, even though it's actually in better cosmetic condition. It's got a couple issues. The lead pipe is bent. The, um, the tuning slide, the main tuning slide has been messed with and isn't working properly. And also this, um, the trigger for the, for the change valve is not, not really in optimal shape. But, in any case, I have blown some notes on it. It does play, and it seems to play almost identically to this one. So, maybe that's an indicator of good quality control. I'm not really sure. Also not sure how old either of these instruments are that I have. Um, it seems like this is at least a few years old and I would imagine that they've only improved since then. Um, so that makes me very hopeful for the brand in general. Um, but anyway, let's, uh, let's dig into the specs of this horn and the playing characteristics. So, as I mentioned, this is a crispy style horn. It looks almost just like a Con 8D um, in terms of how the, how the tubing is shaped and everything. It's an unmodified crispy configuration. It has a large bell throat and um, and it's, it's a yellow brass horn that all the tubing on the inside of the horn is yellow brass, except of course for the slide tubes here, any, any place where you've got two surfaces of metal touching each other. They went for nickel silver, very common um, option and probably a very good one because nickel silver is more corrosion resistant than brass. Um, then we've got a gold brass bell. Uh, the whole tail here is, is gold brass and the lead pipe is also gold brass. So that's an interesting choice. Um, we've got three distinct colors going on here, which is kind of cool. I, I enjoy the aesthetic of that, um, which maybe some people might not, but I don't know. I think it looks nice and um, I don't really know what that really means for the sound. I think nickel silver is supposed to be brighter than brass and yellow brass is supposed to be brighter than gold brass you know like the higher the copper content the darker the sound I'm not an expert on that stuff and um, I definitely cannot claim to have good enough ears to be able to really discern the difference anyway um, so it is what it is uh, but as far as the playing characteristics of this horn um, oh I should mention really quick <laughs> 
I should show you this um, this thumb valve linkage here. Bring it up to the camera. This thumb valve linkage has been modified. That's not the original linkage, but it's actually really cool. It's got this. Uh, it's it actually is reversible, so it can stand in B flat, and it's a mechanical linkage. Which the original linkage, which you can see on the other horn here, is kind of a more typical one piece string linkage there. So um, even though this this mechanical linkage you can hear it is a bit noisy but it's actually very ergonomic and it's very comfortable so I have no complaints about that um, anyway playing characteristics I'm super impressed with this horn uh, if you were to buy a new Wessex horn the price has definitely gone up I think they're over a thousand dollars now they might be twelve or thirteen hundred if you're getting a fixed bell one, and it's a few hundred more if you get the one with the detachable bell. Um, I remember just probably five, six years ago, they were under $1,000, they were maybe $900. Um, so, but still, you know, if you're paying like $1,500 or less for a brand new instrument, I would not expect much from it. But honestly, this is very impressive uh, considering its price. Um, it does have a few issues, mainly just with um, mainly just with intonation. Um, the F, uh, it, it would be the first space F at the bottom of the staff, um, which you'd normally play with first valve on the F horn, um, is sharp. And I think that the open B flat horn version is no different. I mean. That note is basically always sharp if you play it open on the B-flat horn, so you'd expect the F horn fingering to fix that, but it doesn't on this horn. So, um, you know, you could tune that, you could pull out the first F horn slide a little bit, but um, that would make everything else that uses the first valve on the F horn uh, to be flat. So that's a compromise you can't really make. I found, I just covered my hand a little bit, and it fixes it, so it's, it's totally fine. Um, there are a couple other notes, like the C in the staff, um, which you'd normally play on the B-flat horn, but it's the same intonation on the, on the F horn, too. Those notes, both of those Cs in the staff are a little bit flat, and the B and B-flat are a little flat also. So I just have to open up a little bit to get those notes in tune, but they're not very far out, so the adjustment does the trick. Now in terms of just the facility, this horn, um, what's really interesting to me is that the notches for the notes are very wide, um, but they're also very secure. They really lock in, and I feel like it's kind of difficult to miss notes on this horn in a way because the, the pockets where the notes are supposed to go are so wide, and um, but still so firmly there that you know, I can come at it from pretty much anywhere and it will pretty much be there. Um, I actually find it easier to miss notes on my Lanstro because those pockets are much narrower. They feel much narrower on the Lanstro. There it kind of feels much more almost like a straight jacket where you're kind of like, that's where the note's supposed to go, which is a great thing in some respects. Um, but you know, it's just kind of your own personal taste and I'm enjoying just exploring uh, the different characteristics of a different horn. It's just kind of refreshing and exciting to me to play a horn that plays differently and it causes me to play differently, which is cool. Um, and the, the high register is excellent on this horn. It's very secure high register and the low register is huge. It's really fat and uh, just really 
bold, wide sound down there, which is awesome. And the sound of this horn is, it's a very rich, very warm, wide sound, which is what I would exactly want from a large bell crispy style horn like this. Um, it's exactly the right sound and I really, really like it a lot. And what's cool is that even considering that, it's a very efficient horn. I don't feel like I have to work very hard to play, um, even in the high register. So um, that's something that's really cool. Also something I forgot to mention, you know, even with the notes being very secure and the pockets being wide, it's very smooth. I feel like I can kind of float between the notes very easily, much more easily actually on this horn than on my Lanstro. The, those, the notes are much more kind of locked in place and it's not, it's not as easy to be smooth. Um, so it just requires a different approach. Um, but anyway, what's particularly interesting to me playing this horn is how it responds, well, just how my ear perceives it in, a, in the space that I'm in. Because I've not had the chance to play any horn um, in a large space for quite some time now. It's been a couple months that I've been on summer break and just been practicing at home. So... Uh, it does kind of bring about that small room syndrome a little bit, but and a weird side effect of that is that the 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 bigger horn actually sounds better and feels much more comfortable to play in a small space because I feel like I'm able to get that warmth and presence that I really want to hear uh, much more easily on this horn than on the Lanstro. The Lanstro. You can tell it's designed to really project into a hall, and I think the sound develops much further away from the instrument than it does with this horn. Um, that would be an excellent thing to test in a large space. Um, maybe at some point I'll get a couple friends to help me, um, and we'll go to a large space and test it out sometime. That would be a really cool experiment to try. Another interesting thing is uh, the mouthpiece choice. I'm playing a Kantasanu right now. Usually I play a Lasky 75G. Playing this because it just happens to be feeling really good these last few days. Um, I'm not sure that this is really a great match for this horn. I'm not sure that the Lasky is a great match for this horn either. I don't think I really have the right mouthpiece for this horn. Um, so it would require more experimentation and it would probably require me borrowing some mouthpieces which is something I don't really have the time or energy to do at the moment so you know I'm making what I have work right now and it's perfectly serviceable well I think that's about it on this horn for today uh, thank you so much for spending some time with me and listening to me ramble about things that I enjoy rambling about. And um, yeah, I hope you're having a fantastic day. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.